Okay, well, uh, I just did this video almost to the end and then my computer froze and lost everything. So, let's just uh, start over and finish the weight deltas. Hopefully it won't freeze. Uh, and we'll have a training, uh, trainable network. So, okay. We, uh, where were we at? Oh, okay, so we have just finished uh, computing all of the little deltas. I need to go through, now that I have these, and compute all of the weight deltas, okay? So let's compute weight deltas. Okay, for index in range of self dot layer count, that's not the function, like that. Um, I'm gonna do the following. Now notice that as I go through all of these layers, this is the order that they appear from, you know, front to back. Um, that's the order that all the weights appear in. That's the order of all of the underscore layer input, layer output uh, matrices. However, this list of deltas right here was done in reverse order because I need to go from back to front. So for a given index, in here, delta index is going to point to the correct location in the list delta. Uh, and it's really easy to write down. It is just the layer count minus one minus index, whatever position I'm at. All right. Okay, so let's, uh, the first thing we need to do is get a list of layer outputs. Okay, so let's go ahead and compute those. If index equals zero, layer output equals numpy vstack. Uh, this is going to be just like when we did the run. So input dot transpose. Um, and I'm going to append a bunch of ones, one row and case as many columns. Okay. Uh, so that's if we're looking at an input layer. Otherwise, we are not looking at an input layer. And it's going to be a V stack on oops <clears throat> self dot underscore layer output from the previous layer, just like that, with numpy array of ones. And it will have, of course, one row and this many, the same col the number of columns that appear in this right here. So this is going to be that uh, self dot underscore layer output of the previous layer uh, dot shape. And I need to look at the second position to get the number of columns. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so now, um, now I have the layer output for um, updating the weights that I'm concerned with. Remember that um, this list of outputs is from the preceding layer, and so all of the outputs from the previous layer are gonna get multiplied by all of the deltas from the current layer in order to update the weights that connect the output from the previous layer to the delta in the current layer. Uh, and again, you can refer to the vectorization videos. That should all make sense. There's pretty pictures and everything. Now, um, I need to, oh, let me import NumPy real quick. Over here in the console, this is all gone because my computer freaked out. Okay, import NumPy as NP. Okay, so what are you going away? Go away. Uh, okay, so here's the deal. Um, let's just say A is an array that looks like this. Um, one, one, two, two, um, dot transpose. Okay, A looks like this. So this is the deal with the weird implementation detail. Now you have to remember that we're doing all of this stuff in parallel. So the deltas, this one of these elements of delta will be, you know, potentially a matrix where each column is a delta from a different training case. So here the ones correspond to 
uh, the deltas <coughs> for one training case, the twos are for another training case, etc. Now what I need to do is take each one of these individually and multiply it by each one of these output weights from layer output um, and I need to broadcast those together to get a big matrix and I need to do that individually. Now remember layer output also will have a matrix of weights where each column corresponds to a different training case. So in order to get the broadcasting to work correctly what I need to do is fold uh, this second column backwards into a different dimension um, into a different layer. So um, let me show you as an example how that's going to work. So um, first thing I'm going to do, note that you can slice a new dimension onto the list like this, right? If I do none and then everything, everything, I'm using slicing notation because I want to use views whenever possible. I don't want to create brand new arrays the whole time. Um, you'll notice now this is indexed by three numbers. The first one corresponds to a layer, say that's into the screen. Uh, and then the next pair is row and column, as you would expect. So this has one layer, which has two rows and two columns. Now what I'm going to do is slice it into a third dimension, and I'm going to use the transpose function to reorganize the indices of this so that each one of these columns lives on its own layer. Now what's currently counting, the index that's counting columns, right, I want that index instead of counting columns along this third dimension, I want that to count in the first spot, right, in the first index, and I want that to count as layers. So 0, 1, 2 is the index that counts columns, and I want to put that first. So I'm transposing the second index to the beginning. What's currently counting rows, I want to stay counting rows, so that stays the same. And what's currently counting layers is now going to become whatever's left over, counting columns. Now look at what you have. Now we have in the first layer, right, there's open parenthesis, I have a two by one matrix which has two rows, all of these are the ones, and a single column, okay? So now I've folded this uh, into the third dimension by slicing out this first column, <coughs> leaving it sitting right here, and then slicing out the second column, leaving it sitting right there. Now I'm gonna do something the same with layer output, except these are actually going to be reorganized, and it's going to look like this. So remember that layer output, if you go back to the vectorization video, uh, layer output is also going to have columns of different outputs for different training cases. So I need to split those out into different layers, period, because I need to handle each layer independently, because those are corresponding training cases. But I also need to take this column vector and I'm going to broadcast it together with a row vector of outputs in order to get a list of outputs where indices for outputs are changing left to right. Um, and then each of those terms is multiplied by the corresponding delta uh, from the appropriate column whose indices are changing vertically. So I'm actually going to do something like this. None, none, uh, dot transpose. And it's going to look like this. So I still need to slice that off first. And then 0 and 1, I'm actually going to transpose those as well. And it's going to look like this. So this would be what we're going to do for the layer output. Because I want the different outputs to be laid out horizontally in different columns. Okay, So I took this column of 1s, separated it from the column of 2s by folding that into a different dimension. Notice that this is one row with two columns. This is one row with two columns. They live on different layers. Um, and I also need to flip it, uh, transpose it, like in the classical transpose sense, so that I now have a one by two list here. And these will be all of the outputs horizontally. And I'll have a two by one list here. And these will be all the deltas vertically. And I can broadcast this together with this using multiplication, and then generate a matrix, which in this case is two by two, of all of the actual weights. And then what that means is that each layer will be a matrix of weight deltas for that particular training case. And then what I'm gonna do is now, you have to imagine you have this cube or whatever, you have this big uh, three-dimensional array where each slice of it is an actual weight delta matrix um, for a different training case. Now, since I'm training the entire epic all in one stage, 
I'm going to take each one of those training cases, all of those weight deltas that live in different layers, and I'm going to sum them up along the depth axis. So I'm just going to collapse and flatten the thing, adding up all of the little deltas for each training case, all in one step to get one weight matrix. Okay? So that's what we're going to do right now. Okay. The actual weight delta. Now this is the implementation detail that I was talking about. So it's the numpy sum and some stuff is going to happen and it's going to be the sum along axis equals zero. Okay, so this sum right here is the sum that's going to flatten these this three-dimensional matrix or I don't know what you would call that, the three-dimensional tensor uh, of weight deltas and it's going to collapse them all into a single matrix that we can actually then update our matrix of weights with. Now we're going to do everything in one step, so this is actually pretty slick, but that's why it looks so uh, bizarre when I write it down, and it's sort of complicated to talk about. So how do we do it? Um, the layer output, I will do exactly what I said. I will slice it into three dimensions, and I will transpose them in this order. 2, 0, 1, that's what we did here. So they will be laid out in rows where each training case lives on its own layer. And I will multiply that, and this will work broadcasting uh, by delta of, well, delta index, right? I need to pick out the delta that corresponds to the correct uh, layer. Um, and I want to slice this just like that. I want to slice it into three dimensions, and then I'm going to transpose it like this, 2, 1, 0, just like that. And that is it. Okay, um, so there you go. Now all you have to do is say self.weights of index minus equals um, training rate times weight delta. And that should be it. Oh, and then you do that for each one, and then we return the error. Okay, so that was the error from right here. And that should work. Okay, so again, I'll pause the video, and I'll add some junk in here. And that way we can have something that functions in here and should run, and we can try it out. All right, um, so I put a bunch of junk in here. <laughs> um, I was... Okay, so laid out the inputs here. This is the XOR training set, so 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, and 1, 0. Um, and then the outputs are, so this is like 0 and 0. This is like 1 and 1. Uh, remember, the only transfer function we have are sigmoid, so you can't actually have 0 or 1, uh, so low and high. And then this just runs through and runs train epic, and every 10,000 iterations it prints out the error. In fact, let me let me dial this back to maybe I don't know 2,500 or something. Um, so one of the things it it was actually not converging for me, and I discovered that way up here, this scale, uh, the weights that we were initializing were random, but they were very very small, and it was essentially just going stale. The weights were all going to I don't know something very very small, and there was basically no gradient left to actually adjust them with and so if you want to <laughs> have this work go up here change scale to 0.1 um, and then reproduce all of this junk and you should get something that functions so let me run it real quick and we'll see what happens I'm watching this guy over here and it hits a sort of like a plateau at uh, 0.81 and then once it gets off of that plateau um, it gets into one of these regions here. You can see right around iteration mm, 77,000 or so. Uh, it starts getting into a region where the derivative becomes large and then it converges very quickly. All right, so it actually took almost 100,000 iterations to get there, but this is the output corresponding to the input. So for the first one, 0, 0, and 1, 1, we expect low output, so 0 0.05. And for the mixed ones, we expect high output, which is what we get. So there you go, that's the XOR stuff. Make sure you change the, the initialized weights to something larger, uh, and then 
we will be back for another video uh, when we add momentum. Okay, later.